One hour, 15 minutes, one hour, 30 minutes, one and a half. I just put extra time because I know okay. it will be late to join and there'll be some uh, technical things. So just to make sure everything, and it depends on the, the questions people ask at the end. <clears throat> okay. Okay, that's, that's, that's brilliant. Okay, let, let's, let's, let's start. Let's start. Yes, let's start. See, I would just, I want to say start. There is another people there is adding. Okay, anyway. Okay. Uh, if, if the, any disruption in the voice and the thing just text me, please and inform me. Okay. Let's start. Okay, first of all, good afternoon. Uh, thank you very much for attending this webinar. Uh, I will try my best to cover from A to Z today, and I will try to cover this subject, which will be in a benefit for <clears throat> LDS 1, ORA 1, part one exam, part two exams, for people to start working already as well <clears throat> it is just uh, uh, it's not just a webinar i want to add knowledge for you i want to make a kind of style for you so and uh, reshape your way of of thinking because this is important in the exam part one part two and as well in real life and we'll show you what i mean <clears throat> <clears throat> about that, I apologize for that. Now, okay, Cardo, can you hear me? Just confirm, please, for me. Just text me a message. I believe my, my voice is clear for everyone, right? Can you text me? Yes. No, no, that's a brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, now. Uh, this is me. Uh, my name is Mohammed. Uh, most of you, they know me very well. Uh, this is the first slide that start with this important materials here. It is very important for you uh, if you're attending any exam. You need to listen to me very well you need to go to this website the british society and periodontology and there is a list of pdf files it is very important to cover this file specifically in details and there is very important files as well nice beautiful and helpful there is a new file called uh, do matter period it is very nice and beautiful you will see it is uh, uh, it is, uh, just one second. Okay, you will see it is, uh, uh, there's around 120 pages there, but uh, it is really nice. Skim quickly, but there is important knowledge, is uh, quite important for your exam. This, a new classification, this document there is very important. I will go in details about it, but later back, you can go back to, to it. <clears throat> okay, I need to start it from zero. Risk factor, even maybe some information you see it is uh, basic, so, but I want to go through it. This is what you need to see. Oops. 
Okay, I will. Okay. Uh, okay. So, local risk factor. We have two types. We have acquired and we have anatomical, or it is there in the patient. Acquired <clears throat> is just like uh, any plug, calculus, anything acquired due to poor oral hygiene. <clears throat> Okay, and anatomical, it is there in the patient mouth, like animal peels, crowding teeth, malpositioned teeth, all these are factors. Okay, however, it should be able to uh, correct it. And for you as a dentist, when you see this patient, you need to think about treatment plan and how to correct these contributing uh, factors. Now, causes. Very important. Smoking, diabetes, stress, poor oral hygiene, genetics. Always remember this five causes. This is my hand. So always remember because this is help you to remember, in the, especially in the exam. Five causes, five main causes for the periodontal disease. Now, contributing factor or another possible factor is the pregnancy and medication. I will go in details of each one. Now, recently, a study shows that obesity, malnourishment, alcohol, uh, restricted physical activities, people with any chronic uh, conditions considered as are more prone to have uh, uh, periodontitis or gum disease. Now, first cause of smoking or tobacco. First cause, tobacco. I, we need to think in this webinar in two different ways. I need to divide it that as a knowledge and medical term. This is specifically for part one candidates. So we need to know the knowledge in a medical term. For, People who are attending part two, attending part two, you need to know the knowledge and you need to know the layman term for everything you are going to say to the exam, to the, to the patient. Okay, so uh, with the causes, maybe you encounter with a scenario of periodontitis, so you need to be able to uh, explain everything in details and in layman term, please. Okay, so. It's clear that in all the researches that smoking is contributing factor to uh, gum disease or to periodontitis. The fault is about six fold more than the normal people. There is uh, uh, the main reason is the blood flow to the gum to the or to the gingival crevice or this, uh, and the tissue will be decreased. So uh, the ability of the of the of the gum the gingival tissue is to fight the Bacterial infection and inflammation will be much more less. And even the healing process is, uh, will be affected as well because uh, the, uh, the, the, the tissue, they don't have the nourishment, the enough nourishment to build up uh, again. Also, uh, they found that uh, the, the, there is a special enzyme cytokines which cause damage to the, to the tissue will be, uh, the, the secretion will be increased. So for you, Guys, for part one, you need to know exactly like what we said here in the, let me use this one a second. I like this one. This is the red one. This is important for you. Reduction of the gingival blood flow, impaired white cell function, impaired wound healing, and increased protection of inflammatory cytokines, enhancing tissue breakdowns. Why I'm saying that? Because you might have multiple choice and you need to choose one. For you, for part two, you need to say that the, uh, for the part two, you need to know how to say it in layman terms. And you'll say that the amount of uh, blood flow to your gum is being less. So it will reduce the ability of the, of the body or the gum to fight bugs. This is, this is how, what, what you need to know, please. 
okay? And you need to explain for any patient, even in real life, this is the way how we tell to the patient. And we need to tell the patient that uh, uh, this is specifically for the oral part, but you need to highlight as well the general part in terms of uh, uh, heart problems, uh, lung problems, and et cetera, okay? okay. Now. Second cause, diabetes. Uh, please always, when you say, and when you never say because of diabetes, you need to say because of poorly controlled diabetes. It is different, okay? Because the poorly controlled diabetes is the, <laughs> what caused the, uh, the problem, not the diabetic. If the patient diabetic, but it's controlled, then no problem at all. Sorry for that. Minan, are you with us? Yes, finally. I just got in. Anyway. No. So uh, again, it is not the diabetes itself, but the uh, whether it is it is controlled or uh, not. So this is the problem, and we will see why uh, diabetes, how the way it's uh, it's affecting. So you need to know how to assess. Uh, the patient, you need to know how to lay with the with the, the the GP of the patient. Okay. Now it is very important, and now it has been highlighted very soon. And it is a duty for you as a dentist that uh, maybe the patient he comes to to the practice, and you would would uh, and he is not aware that he has uh, diabetes. So if you see periodontitis, you see abscess, you see. Uh, uh, problem with the gum, non-healing. So you need to raise the concern and ask the patient, go to the GP and try to do some of a blood test, please. So it is an additional duty for you. Now, so this is, I've been searching a lot about it and I just tried, uh, to highlight this must two important points and it will be easy and simple for you in turn they will ask you and what what is the main reason the idea is if the uh, if the blood the glucose level be continue high so there will be damages for blood vessels in turn so the, the, the amount of the blood supply the 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 the, the feeding for 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 the body will be uh, affected and in turn as the gum is part of from that it will be affected and uh, it will be more liable for infections and uh, inflammations the tighter of the as well the tighter of the sugar will be increasing the whole body and in turn it will be you know the saliva is part of from our body so the secretion of the saliva the saliva will be secreted in the mouth with high titer of 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 blood sugar so this will give the more chance for a breeding and increasing of of the uh, bacteria inside the mouth which is the main responsible for uh, sending acids produce acids and cause toxins and uh, cause uh, damages to the uh, bone to the sorry to the teeth and to the gum as well now citrus this is the third reason. Citrus shows studies, studies, experiments shows that if you are under citrus, the whole body immunity will be affected. Why, how, nobody knows. But there is a link between the general health, the general immunity, it's really cause suppression and will be uh, clearly uh, affected. This is the main reason, so citrus, can have effect on the uh, the general immunity uh, uh, system and uh, beside that 
sorry for that. Beside that, uh, the general condition, if you are under stress, you tend to be lazy, brushing, cleaning your teeth, flossing, it will be the last thing you think about it, okay? Especially if it will be uh, financial or uh, social. Uh, yes. Now, number four, oral hygiene, poor oral hygiene, patient not brushing, patient not cleaning teeth, so uh, uh, the process of, a, of, of an inflammation or the plug will be start building up two to four days, then the uh, biofilm will be start forming on the tooth, the inflammation will start in two weeks, okay, without a brushing, without regular brushing, things will getting worse. And in four weeks, maybe more the uh, the establishment of uh, bone problem or the pocket will be start uh, developing. So uh, uh, sorry for that. Okay. So definitely, you know that the oral hygiene is a contributing factor. Now. So just one second. Okay, see I missed here because see even here I missed I missed it. Uh, I forget to, uh, to put the slide here, but it is for me. It is five, five. Don't forget it. So I did four. So there is something missing. Genetic. They found in the studies and researches there is periodontitis is. Uh, uh, running in certain families and I, 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 I acknowledge that and I see this in real life and I have really family they came on a regular basis they need to do deep cleaning and the scaling because they have simple periodontitis despite they are maintaining a good uh, or, or proper uh, oral hygiene uh, they made uh, researches on the twins okay and they saw that 50% uh, uh, of them, they uh, have uh, high, uh, really reliable to get periodontitis if one of them, despite they are keeping a, a, or maintaining a good oral hygiene. Another contributing factor, we have the medications and we have the hormonal medications. You know, there is kind of a group uh, of medications. They cause gingival hypertrophy. Uh, so it's important to make sure that uh, uh, make sure what what is the medica what is the medication patient take the medical history and try to check with the patient uh, GP always if there is possibility to uh, uh, to change it uh, or otherwise we need to refer for uh, surgery it is I I had in the last six months, I had two cases. It's horrible cases, actually, and we are referring them to the specialist for, uh, we call it gum or uh, periodontal shaping. So this is the picture here. And the problem with overgrowth makes the cleaning, brushing, uh, flossing very uh, difficult, which makes things worse and worse. Other consideration, pregnancy. The pregnant will go over overall uh, hormonal changes and it will be massively showing in, uh, uh, in, in the, the gingival tissue. Uh, you will see the patient uh, is just in the first few months, there is bleeding, swelling, redness of the, of the gum, and the patient will tell you, I was sleeping in the night and I woke up with, with, with the bleeding of the pillow. I am uh, brushing and there is a lot of blood. So you need to reassure the patient, ask them to spend more time, make sure more accurate in terms of cleaning and the brushing. Uh, so you just uh, reassure the patient and uh, reinforce the oral uh, hygiene. Some, uh, uh, a pregnant a pregnant ladies they end with a pureless so we need to cut it or remove it maybe it will be shrinking after the uh, pregnancy after delivering the baby so uh, but sometimes you need to do excision uh, like I, I, I did one six months ago it was it was a huge really huge uh, I gave instruction of a cleaning uh, rinsing mouth 
it is it was shrinking to a very small size but then uh, there is no choice we need to remove it uh, surgically socioeconomic uh, uh, part as i said there is now strongly associated with the risk of developing chronic disease such as cardiac so they saw the patient with cardiac problems with blood pressures any chronic system disease they are more prone or there is a link between them and between the uh, uh, gum disease now now how how we record any patient any patient any new patient we need to do bpe bpe uh, will give you idea about what's happening what's there it's a quick every day we see 30 to 35 patients so for checkup i book 10 minutes uh, so you need to be quick and uh, with legal obligations uh, you need to make sure that you are doing uh, a proper uh, uh, assessment for the gingiva so they here in, in uk they recommended this bpe which is a quick and effective and give you a very quick uh, idea now new guidelines saying that we need to start for children from seven years uh, we usually do the molars incisors and at age of 11 or 12 we'll start for the full uh, bp now uh, every six months the recall patient you need to do bp every six months so it is routine you need to do uh, to do it now i'm not going to go through the details we'll go for about this one uh, later Quote four, this is later. So this is the WHO uh, probe we use. This is the band between 3.5, 5.5. This is the ball. We use 200, 250 gram, very, very, very light pressure. You walk uh, around the, uh, the teeth using this uh, probe. Uh, in your exam, you we have, uh, it, uh, it might come as a skilled OSCE, so you need to know how to uh, practice. Uh, uh, BP properly. So, the, this is the dentition. S six quadrants, three to three, four to seven, four to seven, four to seven, three to three, four to seven. So, six quadrant done. You will start systematically, please, from upper right, then you will move like this, then downward, then left, or opposite, like this then downward then to the same side rules for the bpe gentle walking around the tooth this is the tooth so you just gently hold it very gently do not hurt okay and walk around the tooth assess see uh, tooth by tooth for the crown to be valid, for the quadrant to be valid, it needs to have two teeth at least. If there is only one tooth, so you need to add it to the so you need to add it to the next quadrant. <clears throat> okay. So, so for that, yes. So the PPE, BPE code or scores zero, one, two, three, four, astronaut or star. Okay. So as you remember, the band between three point five five uh, three point five five point five. Okay. If anything before the band this is star uh, this is score zero one and two anything if the band black band is partially so it is a score three if this one is completely disappeared then it is a score four again pocket zero 
one, three, all of them very easy. All of them are less than 3.5. All of them less than 3.5. So the whole black band is showing. Okay. Zero, healthy predental, no any bleeding, no any problems. One, when there is a bleeding here. Okay, you see all the bleeding. That's it, so it is score one. If there is a bleeding, there is supra subgingival calculus, a plug, any retention factor like uh, overhang, uh, filling, or anything, then it is a score two. So simply, all zero, one, and two. <clears throat> All of them are below 3.5, 3.5, 3.5. This one, healthy. There is nothing at all. Uh, bleeding on a probing. Uh, and there is subgingival or calculus. Here, this is score three. This is when the black band is partially disappeared. Can you see here? It's partially disappeared. So the pocket here will be between four to five milli. Here, score four, the whole band, black band, is disappeared, so it is definitely more than 5.5. So the bucket depth will be six or more. Very easy. Furcation volume, detection of furcation, it is made to the molar teeth. Any questions so far? Um, good evening, good afternoon, doctor. Let's continue then. And if there is any question, we can discuss it later. Okay, so generally speaking, very quick, this is the WHO probe, the black band here, this is the 0.5 ball, okay? And uh, anything before 3.5 is zero, one, two, depend whether it is no bleeding, there is a bleeding and there is calculus or any overhang. Partially disappeared, then it is a score three, all disappeared, then it is score four. <clears throat> all a new patient, as we said, should have BPA record. All the patient, and it should be uh, for every recall after six months. Not only for the new patient, but every recall. It is important. <clears throat> uh, this one. Okay, we'll discuss this one later about six point for charting and this thing. Okay. okay, so this is a bit more clear here. Again, one, zero, one, two, all of them are less than 3.5. Here we have nothing, no bleeding, nothing at all. Here, just a bleeding, as you can see here. And here's some calculus or overhang. Okay, now, <clears throat> can you see here the black band here is partially disappeared? So it is a score three. And the pocket depth is between four and five. Okay, here the whole black band is disappeared. So it is a score four. And the pocket depth is definitely more than 5.5. So it is starting from six and above. Furcation here, as you said, it is for modern astronauts. Now, <clears throat> how to diagnose? What I mean how to diagnose? Now, you have patient, a new patient, sit on your chair. This is the way you need to think, even in the exam. You check the local factors, you checked the, the uh, you did uh, 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 the screening for the patient, you did the BPE, okay, and you checked if there is any bleeding, if there is any calculus, any local factors, or anything else, okay, and then if it is zero, if it is zero, patient is healthy, if it is one, score one, then bleeding, just give oral hygiene instructions, reinforce, explain, okay. If it is score two, remove any contributing factor, like if there is overhang, if there is any calculus. Score three and four. If you noticed that, so then you need to go for a more investigation. You need 
a more steps to further to confirm the diagnosis. Okay, <clears throat> BPE is never considered a diagnostic tool. No way. <coughs> Apologize. <clears throat> okay, so when I have a score three, score four, then even in real life, we need to go to uh, find the other ways to get our diagnosis. Now, we need x ray. We need six point pocket charting and we need medical history and social history. Actually, we do this for any new patient and we keep updating. They are really important. Before I start that, I really liked this important point. Maybe it is you're not aware about it, okay, but it is a good idea to, 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 to uh, explain for you. It is important to note that the base of the pocket is not being tested here. What is being assessed here is the marginal bleeding only. This is about a bleeding score. So in gingivitis, when the patient gingivitis, we do bleeding score, we do gingival score, plug score, sorry. So it is, but in periodontitis, we mainly focus on a bleeding on a probing. So to get the difference between a bleeding of probing bleeding on probing, sorry, and the bleeding index. In the bleeding index, the calculation is different. We follow a special formats about the bleeding index. We check the whole teeth. We score of zero or one. There is a bleeding or there is no bleeding. And you calculate on the number of the surfaces. And we give multiply by 100 to give the percentage. In the probe, we use is, is will be moved very slightly over the margin okay while in uh, probing or bleeding we use the who probe and uh, to uh, to uh, examine the pocket depth and assess if there is any bleeding so the probe there will be more deep and it's mainly in the special and the interproximal area so a bleeding score has been developed the locally derives involve assessing system. Oh, I forget about that, but it is important to note that the base of the pocket is not being tested here. What is being assessed here is the marginal bleeding only. Now, the level of the marginal bleeding is reflective of daily oral hygiene. Look at this. So when we you, you move the probe around the tooth when the margins only, this will give you hint how the patient look after his mouth, while the bleeding from the pocket is a sign of uh, active disease, active gum disease. Okay, so this is, I want you to understand this concept because it's really important uh, for you. Okay. Uh, now this is, Ramford teeth. Uh, this is a modified blood score, uh, a bleeding score, and uh, plug score. I don't want to go in details. They are trying, to, as I said, we see every day 30 to 35 patients, so uh, it is difficult to go through all the teeth. Okay, so uh, they make it only for six teeth, very quick and uh, simple, just to give you an indication. But for uh, periodontitis, then we need to go for the full surface. I don't have there is no room here to go in details for this one. If you need to know more about uh, this, then uh, just go to the BSP uh, website. That is very nice and beautiful. Do matter per your handout there. It is very nice and uh, beautiful. Again, very quick, zero code, no presidential problem. Code one, need oral hygiene problem. Code two, Remove any oral hygiene definitely, like the code one, and remove any contributing factor. Code three, we need uh, more details. We need x rays. We need uh, a, a plug and a bleeding. See this here, they mentioned full mouth. Okay. Oral hygiene, remove retentive factor, and we need more. We need, besides the x ray, we need to go for. Uh, six-point pocket charts and all this. I will explain it in details later. 
code four again. We need more details. We need X-rays. We need six-point pocket charting. We need more history about smoking. About about about. Okay. Medical history. It is very important to take a full medical history, and now it is must. And you are responsible that the patient uh, record everything in details, and you need to, uh, to make sure that he is signing and updating. Uh, medical conditions may be as, uh, considered a contributing factor, like diabetes, so you need to make sure that you take a full and a proper medical history. Social history, it is very important to know smoking, since when, how many cigarettes, is the patient willing to quit smoking? It is your duty to explain about the risk of the, of the, of the tobacco, of the smoking. You need to tell the patient that we have uh, NHS services, it's free, offer to the patient, you can help him with that. Very important. Social history, smoking, stress, it is very important to check the stress. It is, it is a serious issue that you need to consider it. You need to speak with the patient, ask what is the problem, how they can help. Do you want to refer to the GP for liaison about the uh, management of the stress? Make a, a, a good rapport with the patient. It is very important. Uh, guys, with the, with, the, with the part two exam, is very important for you in all cases and seen cases. PLD people, it is very important for you in real uh, life. Socioeconomic, the general conditions, the, how the way that people live, are they are highly educated, low educated, brushing, interested in, 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 in brushing and cleaning. Okay, you need to motivate the patient, you need to talk, explain, he might lose his teeth, blah, blah, all these things. Very important. Okay, so for more details for periodontal problems, we need, as we said, we need x ray, we need six point pocket charting, we need medical and uh, social history. Now, before I go in details, I want to share some important terminology. I'm sure you know about it, but it is important to uh, go through it. Clinical attachment loss or CAL it is very important. Term. Clinical attachment loss. Here we measure. Can you see this is the animal here? Okay, this is all the animal. At this point, the animal will meet the cementum. This point is very important, cemento animal junction. This is very, very important. You need to know, you need to locate it on the X-ray. Okay, sometimes the gum is resized and goes down here. Okay, so this area will consider as a gum recession. Okay, and from the top, of the gingival margin to the junctional epithelia here, where the epithelia will be meet with the cementum, this is called the pocket depth. All this is the pocket depth here. Okay. And this from here to here, the gum is shrinking, so it is recession. But the gum should be here around. So all this area consider as attachment loss okay so this is the clinical attachment loss this is very important my friend this is important for part two part one and in real life but please you need to know in details how you assess how you calculate okay so for example here the gum recession here is two million okay and this is the gingival margin here this is the junctional epithelia here so this or this is the base of the pocket from here to here is four let me say okay sorry and here the gum recession is two so altogether it will be the clinical attachment will be six they might ask you in part one and they might ask you in part two to do it just in a math way it is very important now <clears throat> the bleeding on a problem uh, as we discussed, bleeding or problem, we use it in six-point pocket charting. It is a very important sign of an active disease, which is different from 
a bleeding index. Now, mobility scale here in UK, they lack uh, Miller's grading system, which is a class one, class two, class three, it is about one millim, anything less than, uh, sorry, uh, anything up to one millim in a horizontal direction, okay, class one, anything more than one millim in a horizontal direction is a grade two. Anything more than one milli in horizontal direction and in vertical direction is a class a three. And this one is almost hopeless tooth. Okay, again quickly, class one up to one milli. Horizontal displacement more than one milli. Horizontal displacement more than one milli horizontal and uh, vertical movement. This is the mobility and uh, great. Sorry. Now, X-ray. Why they are important in Peru? X-ray is you can't confer. You can't diagnose only an X-ray. X-ray is a tool uh, help you to get your diagnosis. So that's why we said when we need to get our diagnosis, we need BPE, we need six point charting, we need x rays, we need uh, medical history, we need so all together will give us our diagnosis. We need to assess the anatomy, we need to help us to make a proper diagnosis, assessment, treatment plan, review, if the patient doing well, so it is help. Now, there is a nice uh, say about the x ray because of uh, statistic effect of the x-ray and uh, uh, damages and uh, the, 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 the regulation about the x-ray, but the statistic effect is almost negligent and very minimal. But it is also important to consider taking x-ray and monitoring to assess the prognosis because the patient are going to lose teeth, which the teeth is important as well. So always think about X-ray. If it is justified, then just take it. Now, <clears throat> as you are aware, for code 3, as we said, we need X-ray. For code 4, we need X-ray. Because at code 3 and code 4, now we notice that there is a pocketing, there is bone resorption, and we need to assess the bone resorption in X-ray. So code 3 and code 4 need X-ray forcation as well need uh, x-ray okay for a score one score two we don't need here x-ray no radiographic required unless evidence of bite wings or there is any uh, we need uh, for uh, a details uh, periodontal examination advanced periodontal examination or there is something wrong, there is a problem with endo, there is a problem with the rest of it. So, generally speaking, for exam purposes, zero one, uh, score one and two, we don't uh, need uh, that. Sorry. Okay. Okay, this one. Score three, now because the pocket is not too much deep, so it is around four to five million. So they believe is horizontal bite wing is enough, but we agree that the gold standard for periodontal checkup or assessment is periapical. Okay, so if you do periapical, it is a golden standard for all a practitioner. Some people, they said uh, horizontal bite wings is more than uh, enough because for patients, a new patient, for example, we take a horizontal bite wings, okay, when, when we see the patient for the first time. So if you see that the horizontal bite wings that you took to assess caries or decay, is enough and show you uh, the amount of the ball loss. So that's it, you don't need to take 
more uh, x-rays. It's not justifiable because you can see everything in the horizontal uh, bite wings. Now, for a score four, okay, because we have more pocketing, more deep pocketing, score four, so that means the black bands, 3.5 to 5.5 is fully inside, so the pocket depth will be six millim and above, so then uh, we need a bit more lo longitudinal x-ray, okay, to show uh, the tooth more. This is the idea, but if it is bite wings, then it will show you a bit less. So maybe the pocket is here and it can be reached by the horizontal bite wings. So you can take uh, vertical bite wings and again, the gold standards is intraoral per apical. Here are the same, exactly. Period and the region are important. Periapicals, because periapicals, is, why it's gold standard? Periapicals will show you the full tooth. You can see everything. You can see this area. You can see the, if there is an apical changes, if there is an endo, periondo region, it will give you full assessment, no headache. So it, it's considered as a gold standard. And the exam, they will give you choices, which one you will pick up. So just pick up a golden standard periapical. Okay. Uh, just uh, quickly here, this is the cement animal junction. This is the cement animal junction. Very important to know about that. This is the mesial bone. A crest, see the resorption of the bone. Can you see here? This is all resolved. This is the level of the resorption here and here. Cement animal junction from here. So from here to here, it is the clinical attachment loss and you see with the if, if the gum is around here so this is the pocket depth but for the clinical attachment loss you check it from the cement enamel junction to the base of the pocket we'll go in details about this one later see. ideal parameters for horizontal bite wings same display for upper and lower arch. So the amount of the tooth is shown here. It should be almost the same, okay, here. Or should be the same here. You shouldn't uh, show this area and then your the lower teeth will be till here. This is not acceptable. We need to see the models and the pre-models. This is the idea. This is very important. You need to show the Models and pre models show crowns and the bone levels. This is the crown and this is the bone level. That's what we need. That's why we take we uh, that's we use it to assess uh, the bone uh, loss. <coughs> Vertical bite wings again the same. <coughs> Sorry for that. The amount of tooth is shown should be the same here and the same here. Visualization of the mother, sometimes second premolars, okay? So, but the most important is the mother because we use it for furcation. Okay, so uh, mothers is more important. And this will show, again, this is the furcal areas and the bone levels. Ideal parameters for the uh, periapicals. Teeth displaying parallel to the occlusal plane, like this, okay, acceptable. Full visualization of almost a group of two to three teeth, acceptable here. No uh, uh, inferior dental nerve overlapping or anything. Uh, bone defect morphology clearly identified by a gray shade should be clear and nice and show all the teeth. That's why it will be useful. Use FOPG. Sometimes OPG will give you idea about the overall uh, condition of the bone loss, but for a specific uh, details, it is not advisable. That's why they, sometimes they took OPG with selected uh, periapicals in certain areas because here we have separate position here, this area separate position with the vertebrae, so it will be uh, not good uh, enough. 
six point pocket charting. It is very important tool and used for uh, to assess the periodontitis for a score three and for a score four. And six point pocket charting, we check and we assess uh, some important things. We check the propping depth, very important, or the pocketing. We'll, uh, we will show the gingival margin, uh, the gingival margin, uh, so we can assess the, if there is a recession, if there is any the, the, the deep pocketing, and we assess the clinical attachment loss, the bleeding on a probing, a plug, forcation, and mobility. This important to know what is this, but we have system. This is your screen in the practice will be, and uh, it, uh, as we said, it will be uh, divided into palatal and into uh, buccal area, okay? And in each surface, because it is six point pocket charting, so you are going to assess the three points here and the three points here as well, so it will be in six different area, okay? For the palatal and for the buccal side, we will assess the pocket, we will assess the recession, we will assess the uh, mobility. If you can see here, if you can see this area, okay, it, there is specific colors for the gum recession, blue pocketing, bleeding. Sometimes it's, it is different, varies for, between system and system, but this is uh, the most acceptable system. This is more a clearer one. Uh, for you. Uh, can you see this is the red line here? Okay, let's let's start again. This is the buccal side and this is the lingual side. For the buccal side, we assess the mobility, furcation, bleeding or probing plug, uh, gingival margin, so we can assess a propping depth. So here in this system, you can see this is the red line indicate the gingival margin here. Can you see here? It is running here all, all around. Okay, so from here to here is the, uh, we can assess and check. A black or blue indicate the junctional epithelia. Okay, see this is the junctional epithelia. Okay. Uh, so, and this blue area will tell you about the pocket and here will tell you about the recession area. Everything will be recorded here. All the details will be here. It's it's a quite uh, exhausting and uh, annoying. I don't like to do it, but instead I refer my patient with uh, if need uh, maintenance, go refer to the uh, 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 to the hygienist. Now, very important point. I need to go back. Uh, if you see. Uh, let's let, let's discuss it in the management about this code three and code four. Yeah, we'll discuss about the management there. So this show, uh, hopefully everything is clear about uh, the six point pocket charting, medical history and social history. We discussed now. After all, what you did since the patient came, sit down, you did BPE, you find that the patient have uh, code three or code four, so the patient have gingivitis, we took x-ray, we made six point pocket charting, we took medical history, social history. Now, I need to get my diagnosis. I need to make my records, I need to tell the patient, I need to tell the examiner, what is my <clears throat> diagnosis? If they will give me these details, what is my diagnosis? So. International Workshop for Classification of Periodontal Disease and Condition 1999. This is the old system. It's about gingival disease, chronic periodontitis, aggressive periodontitis, periodontitis manifestation of systemic disease, necrotizing periodontal disease, abscess of periodontium, periodontium periodontitis associated or periodontitis development <clears throat> or acquired. So this is the classification from one to eight. So we have eight classification. <clears throat> this one changed later, but I need to go through this one. So we can compare with a new one. Okay. There is some changes about that. Chronoperiodontis cancel, cancel, this one cancel. 
uh, abscess, this cancer, and all this cancer, and we'll see how it is changed. Besides this classification, there is subclassification about the chronic periodontitis, localized, generalized, anything up to 30% <coughs> is localized, anything more than 30% is generalized. Also, here we have aggressive periodontitis as well, which will be the same. This is a very important picture. I want you to look at it. So, the, the periodontitis, the chronic periodontitis, they subdivided into mild, moderate, and severe, according to the uh, pocket depth, three to five, five to seven, more than <coughs> seven. Healthy gums, one, two, or three, because after 3.5, if you remember that our probe, so definitely there will be a uh, bore resorption, then that means there is uh, a pocketing starting there, then it will be periodontitis. So from one to 3.5, I would say, rather than three, 3.5, it is considered as normal. Anything more than 3.5, it's called mild periodontitis, five to seven moderate, more than seven is advanced or severe. Keep in mind this picture, please. I'll put it there again so we can compare. Now, aggressive periodontitis, it is a horrible condition. It is difficult conditions. You can't believe what will happen to the patient. Simply in the practice, I had two or three cases, 19 years old, 21 years old, nice, beautiful girl. Just put the uh, checking of the BP, the prop is going down. Uh, take x-rays, a lot of pocketings on the, on the whole patient mouth. Uh, reasons, not clear. Genetics play an important role. Often young patients, usually with patients of group age of 35 and below. The, uh, uh, the, the thing that the, the patient will maintain good oral hygiene, cleaning, flossing, very uh, nice. And you will see that when you take the x-ray, the patient don't have uh, have have a vertical bone uh, resorption rather than uh, a horizontal bone resorption. Uh, all aggressive periodontitis should be referred to the specialist. Complexity to artery, I remember. I can b b believe. Okay. Uh, nothing to do. We need to uh, do deep cleaning, start six point pocket charting, and refer the patient to the specialist. Will go through it later. For people attending part two, it is very important how to explain to the patient what is the aggressive periodontitis and why it is no anymore. We'll, we'll give you a hint about it later. Chronic periodontitis, it is almost opposite. It is with eldest people, with poor oral hygiene. We will see horizontal bone resorption rather than uh, uh, vertical bone uh, resorption. Now, people met in 2017 in Chicago and uh, in the workshop, and they decided to uh, go ahead with a new uh, system for uh, Perio and the AFP. Uh, per, per, uh, AFP uh, Committee for Periodontology, they agreed there is a new classification of uh, periodontitis. People here in BSP, uh, in the British Society of Periodontology, they sat and saw and agreed with this European uh, new classification, but uh, they find that, they found that it is quite not applied in a real practice. So that's why they, they adjust a little bit of it and we give it in the shape and it's published uh, on the BSP uh, uh, website. Now, this point is very important. This page is very important for you. It is very important for you if they will ask you questions in the MCQ. It is very important for you. If you have argument with the actor and the patient and the MFDS and the ORE, it is very important. If they, they will ask you why, 
why this there is a new system why they don't uh, stay with the old system they believe that if you have a patient uh, uh, with periodontitis for example and you spend a lot of time cleaning brushing uh, treatment follow-up checkup they saw that the diagnosis is still the same it is again it's periodontitis and there is no uh, showing anything in, in, in terms of improving of the condition while the new system uh, give more details about the improving uh, and uh, other prognosis of the condition in terms of uh, the stage, in terms of the pocket depth, in terms of the, the patient, the, the condition is stable, unstable, and the remission uh, stage. Okay, so that's why uh, they believe it is uh, a bit uh, more. And maybe as a GP dentist, we can uh, sense this, but maybe the specialists, they have a better sense for them. With the new uh, uh, classification. Now, headlines, important points the massive changes now, aggressive periodontitis is not recognized anymore. But instead, there is what we call molar incisors pattern. They believe that why because now in 2014 can you see here in 2014 scientists specialists they tell us that there is an ample evidence showing that aggressive periodontitis is a distinct disease category which is different from chronic periodontitis that's why in the old classification they consider as a specific condition in 2017 don't ask me why i don't know why same scientists same researchers, they said no evidence of different pathophysiology, little consistent evidence that they are different disease. Okay, so it's contradiction, but this is, this is the science, and this is the guidelines, we need to follow the guidelines. So the people, same people, they used to believe it's a distinct conditions, now they believe that this is not a distinct condition. So in any argument, it is very important to know these point, please. Go back to this one. Okay, so instead, instead of consider it as a condition, now it's considered as a, a type of extent or distribution, which is restricted to molar incisors or type of pattern of presentitis. Now everything is cancelled. We have only one word we call it periodontitis and necrotizing periodontitis is, is stay uh, the same, okay? Things are now, the periodontitis is uh, staged and uh, graded to assess in more details, we'll go for it now. Now, again, 2017 classification for periodontal disease. You have a new patient, you did your BPE, so it is very important to know that we are still using the BPE. Don't get confused. And according the code of the BPE, we are assessing. But how you translate your BPE findings, it is a bit changed. The system is a bit changed, but still the tool is the same. Okay, so again, I still have, I did my BPE, score zero, one, two. Okay, this patient have gingivitis. And for the patient with gingivitis, I need to do plug score, bleeding index, and see if it is less than 30%, it is local gingivitis, it is more than 30% it is general gingivitis here. So at this point, we, are, we don't have periodentitis. So here it's only gingivitis. Now, code three, my friends, a please very important, stay with me. 
when we do probing, we will assess and we'll see. And you will have <coughs> you will have code three. So the probe is partial. Uh, the black band is partially disappeared. So it is code three. Now, if you remember in the guidelines for code three, they mentioned that we do six point pocket charting only after the treatment why because here is very nice and say initial periodontal therapy and review in three months with localized six point pocket charting involving the sick stent for the sick stent only so because most of code three in a general dental practitioner if you do scaling and polishing good scaling, good cleaning, good oral hygiene, remove any factors, review in three months. Then at this point, you do the six point pocket charting, you will assess the propping depth, the bleeding on a propping, any recession, anything, if the patient is okay. So then you don't need to refer to the specialist. This is how I want you to think about it. So I am talking about this one. Okay, but, after three months, if you, when you did the six point pocket charting and you see that there is active disease, there is pocketing, things are not good, then you will refer or you will treat as a score or code four. Okay, so when we treat code four and you consider it as a periodontitis, then we need to do full assessment, we need to Assess number one, extent if it is less than 30%, localized if it is more than 40%, it is generalized, or it is more than incisor pattern. But all is periodontitis. Okay, localized, generalized, periodontitis. Then we will do a staging. So, generally speaking, just you will not forget for code three, we do six point pocket charting after the initial treatment, after, so after three months. But for code four, for a star astronaut, you will do six point pocket charting before the treatment and after the treatment. Now staging and degrading. Staging is show you how severe the disease of the patient or the severity of the periodontitis of the patient. Localized, generalized, modern incisors will show the extent or the distribution of the disease. A grading show you how quick, how fast is the disease. So maybe me and Ahmed, we have the same bone resorption. We have 50%, we have 50%. I am 40 years old, he is 40 years old. I am 44, by the way, not 40. Okay, we have the same bone resorption, but for different factors, maybe we'll assess and we'll see the a grade. What is, is it? C, B, A, it is fast, is it a quick? So it is varies between patient and patient now so we will go on details about this one the fall staging about the grading but the quickly now assessment of the current periodontitis is currently stable remission currently unstable this three a green amber and red you need to know by heart please it is very important this one and this one is the same almost the same no pro a pocket periodontal depth less than uh, all them uh, less than four milli. This one here the same. Uh, no bleeding or probing at four and here the same. But the difference between stable and remission is this one less than ten percent and this one more than four percent percent. Other than this, it is currently unstable. Now, all this headache. And Dr. Mohammed asking you to join his webinar, come please, blah, blah, all this said. It is just to help you write this line. That's it. 
okay? We need to, with the end of this webinar, I, I want you to know how to say that my diagnosis is generalized periodontitis stage three grade B current unstable risk factor. We'll do it now, one by one. Now, do you remember I told you that, please remember this picture. This is from the old classification where it considered, they say, they name as mild, moderate, and severe. Now, there is no room for such word. Now it is stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four. So this is stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four, or almost around. Now, in the new workshop, please listen to me carefully. In the new workshop, they emphasize on the you on using the clinical attachment loss as a guidance for the uh, a new uh, classification. We use CAL that we discussed it previously. Okay. Clinical attachment loss, this one. So here, for a stage one, clinical attachment loss is two million. For moderate is three, four, five, seven. But in the UK, they said this one is not applied. It is difficult. We don't have time to check the clinical attachment loss for each patient. That doesn't apply. It is not a practical in real life. So instead, they said let us use the X-ray. And according to the X-ray, we will assess the staging. Staging means the severity of the disease. So they said, okay, let's take X-ray. The patient is in you. Let's take uh, uh, bite wings and we use the bite wings as a guidance to assess the periodontitis. So they said less than 15% is stage one. For one third, stage two, up to the middle third, stage three, more than that, it is a stage four or here advanced or apical. So this is all about staging. It is the first step. Now grading, very simple. Don't make things difficult for you. One second. Just bolus, how you say? Assume it is 50% divided by the patient age. What is the result? Okay. If it is less than 0 0.5, so it is grade A. If it is more than 1, it's a grade C. Anything in between, it will be grade B. So simply, the patient is 50 years old and the bolus is 25%. 25%, 25 multiplied by 50, it will be 0 0.5. So 0 0.5 is in this area. So it is a grade B. We'll do some uh, mathematical calculation now, later. So we did a staging how severe or assess the severity of the disease, a grading, how quick or the, the, or the prognosis of the disease, okay? So now this is the most important extent or distribution, extent or distribution, generalized, localized, modern sizer, classification or staging, stage one, stage two, stage three, a grading, grade A, grade B, grade C, current status, is it stable, remission, or active? Risk factor, it is very important now with the new classification to mention whether, to consider the risk factor in your diagnosis and you need to mention if the patient on, uh, is a smoking, diabetes, or not. So your final line, generalized, parenthesis, stage three, grade B, currently unstable, uh, risk factor is smoking, obesity, whatever it may be. <clears throat> Again, staging, grading, extent. How I you do that? I do that by my X-ray. 
I can use horizontal bite wings, I can use vertical bite wings, I can use periapical, I can use uh, uh, DPT, and now Combium CT scan is, there is a room for it as, as well. Current disease activity, probing depth, and the bleeding. You will assess if the patient has probing depth, how much it is the probing depth, and you will assess and you will see if it is active on risk factor or from the history. If the patient will be, have obesity, diabetes, from the social history. That's why we said to get our diagnosis, we need six point pocket charting, we need x ray, we need medical and dental history. Tanya, do you have any question? So I want to be able to continue watching because I need to go out, but you know, it's very difficult. That's no problem. Tanya, do we need to mention the current status? Yes, yes, of course. It's a part. Okay, Tanya, look at this. You always, your diagnosis should be like this. Always your diagnosis. You, sorry for that, sorry, sorry. Just one second, okay. Okay, so this is your diagnosis. Always will be, you need to assess. One second. Okay. So, what's happening? Okay. So, number one. First part of your diagnosis to say if it is generalized or localized. Mm -hmm. Second part is to say if it is stage one, stage two, stage three. Third mm -hmm. part to say if it is a grade A or B or C. Fourth mm -hmm. part to say is currently stable, non-stable remission. Fifth part, smoking or risk factor. So again, it is very mm -hmm. easy. Causes of the periodontitis, five. Yeah. Diagnosis of the periodontitis, again, five so five things to remember thank you doctor okay <sighs> no. again has to, uh, yeah so this is what i said we need to write staging, grading, extend, staging one, two, three, four, grading A, B, C, extend, localized, generalized, molar incisor, current disease, active, uh, unstable, remission, stable, risk factor, smoking, or any of the others. Again, staging, this is in detail, staging, severity of the disease, one, two, three, four, grading, susceptibility to the present that is A, B, C, this is the components. To see it on x-ray <clears throat> because in uk as we said they believe that x-ray is very important if you don't have x-ray for any reason if the patient said no i don't want to take x-ray i'm scared from uh, uh, from cancer then what you will do you will go to clinical go to attachment, clinical attachment. Yes. Yes. this is the only that you can do so in the new system we have two things two ways to get our diagnosis through the CAL, clinical attachment loss, which is a clinical unit to check it, or through the uh, X-ray, which is what we are doing now. So stage one, less than 50% see this is the cement less than junction. So this is the cemento enamel junction here, and this is the bolus. When you assess your x-ray, you go to the worst site or the worst area and you start your diagnosis. We'll do it later. So this is the bolus here. This is the cemento enamel junction here, and this is the bolus here. This is the area here as well. Okay. I will assess how much it is. Is it within the rest? So it's a stage two. <clears throat> stage two, stage one, sorry, stage two, within the coronal third. So this is the cement enamel junction, and it's up to here. So it is more than 15%, but it is still within the 
coronal third, so it is stage two. So I missed stage three here. Stage three should be to the uh, up to the middle, okay. But for stage four, severe interfraximal bone loss within the apical third. Here, okay. This one, can you see? It? This is the cement animal junction here, and all this is. <clears throat> now, when we assess the bone resorption, we assess the interproximal bone resorption. Why? Because in the x ray, the buckle on the uh, lingual side is not shown with the superimposed. So that's why all our assessment will be on depending on the interproximal uh, bone resorption. So again, bone loss, this is how we assess the grading bone loss on the patient age and see what is the result and assess anything less than 0.5 grade A, anything more than 1 grade C, anything in between, it is. This is a grading system, again. And this is, for example, as well, this is the patient has 60 years old with 30% bone loss here. So the patient meet here is all, if you, if you do this one, 30%, here 60, it will give you 0.5. So 0.5 here, it is great. So have this, then you compare to this one. Anything less than 0.5, this is very important, less than 0.5, so it is A. So the patient is here, it's 0.5, so it is grade B. Extent, very important, localized, anything less than 30% or up to 30%, and this is the staging again. Currently stable, a bleeding, if you remember we said this is can you the die? same, can you almost the same here mind? and here. The problem is just a bleeding or a problem less or more than 10%. This one for the severe cases, the bleeding or a problem at for MMCI for the five. Guys, can you mute your microphone who is eating chips? Classification, again. For dental health, this is my patient, a new patient comes to me, I did BPE for him, I said it is zero, the BPE it is zero or one or two, so it is gingivitis, that's it, treat as gingivitis. If it's score three or four, then it is periodontitis and we need to do the new classification, staging, grading, stability, risk factor and the extent. Now, this is a full mouth per apical x-ray, show you how they will assess the bore resorptions in between the teeth. Yeah. <clears throat> this is as like we did here, how to assess the pocket depth or the loss of attachment here from the cement to enamel junction to the base or at the junction of the epithelia. <clears throat> this is how you can classify from the cement enamel junction. Okay, this is the first third, this is the second third, and this is the apical third. And just one second. Guys, can you make sure that you put it's your microphone on mute? To, be, to stay mute, please. Okay. Okay. Okay, I need to give this one. <clears throat> okay, so again, from my opinion, 
this is the weakness of this uh, classification because maybe me, I will say this is the apical third. You, you will say no, this is the apical third. So it will be virus that might affect your diagnosis anyway. This is, this is what I believe this is the main weakness of, of it. So now, uh, this is full apical mouth. I took it to this patient, Mr. Adam, 60 years old, smoking 15 cigarettes per day, bleeding on a probing, 77 million, uh, million pockets. So for the first thing I will do, I will check what is the worst part here. I believe it is here. Okay, can you see this one here? So this is the bore resorption. So I will see the, what is the worst part and I will check it here. Okay, can you see it is in the apical? So it is definitely for me, it is a stage four because it is in the apical part. Can you see, is the bone resorption is covering more than 30%? Yes, definitely, can you see here? So it is generalized. So I have generalized, I have uh, uh, generalized periodontitis and stage four, and I will do the grading, how much the resorption, what you think here, it is almost 90%, multiply on 60 here, 90% on 60, so it will give you around 1.5, check the grading, anything more than one, the, than one, so it is C, so grade C, <clears throat> bleeding on a probing, the, the patient is unstable, risk factor is smoking 15 cigarettes. So my final diagnosis, generalized periodontitis, stage four, <clears throat> uh, unstable, risk factor, smoking. Is it clear? Just one second. Dr. Mohammed, do we have to say unstable or we can say active disease? Okay, good. Now, this is another case. <clears throat> By the way, <clears throat> in the exam, they will give you the information you need. They will give you the bleeding or propping, they will give you the pocket dip. Definitely, they will give you the scenario. It will be proper, but I want you to know how to use your <clears throat> information. But don't forget, that's it. Easy and simple. New classification. It is five components. Extent, staging, grading, stability, and risk factor. That's it. This is the x-ray. They will give you like this x-ray. They will give you OPG, whatever they will give you. I will look at them. I will see where is the worst part. Okay, assume this is the worst part here. Okay, this is the worst part here. And uh, this is the cement to enamel junction here. Okay, so this one, if it is less than 15%, then it is periodontitis. See if it is affect more than 30%. I believe, yes, it is more than 30%. <clears throat> so it is generalized. Periodontitis, stage one, because it is less than 15%. Now the grading, 40. Resorption, how much? 15. Okay. On 40, it will be uh, about uh, grade uh, uh, B for you. Okay, and then bleeding on a probing, <clears throat> check if it's stable, assess with your six point pocket charting, and then no risk factor given, then we don't need to write any risk factor. Here are the same as well. And now, I believe I talked a lot about management. Let's go quickly to the management. Again, zero, code zero, one, two. There is no problem at all here. We don't need anything. Here we need oral hygiene instructions, maybe skeleton polishing. We need to do bleeding and uh, plaque charts. Here, if there is any uh, factor, like plaque retentive factors of any filling or anything, enamel pairs, Anything you need to remove, if you remember, that's why we talked about the local factors from the beginning. We need to correct it and uh, remove. We don't need just normal checkup, BP at the regular checkup every six 
months. Now, code three, the uh, patient have a partially uh, disappeared uh, probe. As we said here, periodontal charting of six tent is currently after initial therapy. Now it's clear why it is after the initial therapy for you. Because for code three, we can try at the general dental practitioner. Then if that doesn't work, then we can refer as a code four. I will talk about root surface there, Brian, later. Okay, score four here, full periodontal charting before and after. X-ray, you can give uh, horizontal bite wings, you can give vertical bite wings, periapical, but again, gold standard is periapical. Now, for this patient, it is very important to liaise with the patient, engage with the patient, talk to them, Explain to them in the layman term how uh, you can, uh, what is the problem, what is the periodontitis, what is the cause of the periodontitis, and instruct them, explain to them, show them how I demonstrate. Guys, from part for part two, it is very important to know how to do that. <clears throat> okay, uh, do demonstrations. This is what we do in real practice as well. In real life, I explain, I have model, I have a brush, I have frosting, I, saw, I, I will. Uh, show the patient how they use how, how they use a practice i will ask the patient to practice in front of me you will be, can't believe how many patients they don't know how to do interdental brush and it's quite difficult especially <clears throat> in the back uh, teeth a plan tell the patient we will work as a team as uh, uh, from my side i will do one two three i will do clinic i will do uh, this, this, and this, and the, from your side, is very important to maintain meticulous oral hygiene. We'll see you every three months. We'll do this treatment. This uh, support, keep support. The really need support is not easy. Does somebody tell you that you are going to lose your teeth? It will be a bit uh, uh, not nice, especially with patient with aggressive periodontitis or molar incisor periodontitis. Now, now. Uh, for patient with a score three or score four, I, I don't have time in real life to uh, uh, do the six point pocket charting in detail. So instead I will refer to the uh, hygienist. It is very important for part two guys to understand why I refer to the hygienist, tell the patient to give you earlier appointments. They are more professional, they are spend more time in terms of cleaning. And this is sample how we refer uh, the patient to the hygienist will give the definite diagnosis because still this is the prescription the hygienist will work under your prescriptions okay and will tell the patient about the diagnosis about the medical history here and you will give the prescription to use which uh, uh, local anesthesia to use especially when the patient do root surface debridement now what is the difference between root surface debridement and root planning? Now, they don't prefer to go for root planning. Root planning is a bit more aggressive than root surface debridement. They, instead, they use the scalar and go deep and uh, subgingivally because they believe that uh, uh, scaling uh, or root surface debridement under uh, subgingivally will disrupt the biofilm, will wash away the toxin. Uh, and will create a better uh, har harbor and uh, for for starting a new uh, healthy gum. If that doesn't work, then they will suggest root planning to remove any necrotic cement term and remove any highly attached calculus uh, or another part to make the root surface smooth and give the chance for the uh, junctional epithelia to start their attachment and a proliferation cells proliferation at that uh, site. So this is just to give you an idea about how we refer, what to refer. People with part two, it's important for you, actually. Now, uh, yes, this is again, this is, we just said this one. Uh, after the treatment, and then within one, two weeks, things will start getting uh, uh, better. And formation of uh, long junctional epithelia will start after the root surface debridement. Uh, the progressive coronal over two or three weeks, maturations, which means the multiplications. It is very important. So that's during this three months, do not do any inter, uh, interruption to the healing area, to the junctional epithelial. That's why we see the patient every three months to see. And we will again do six point picharting with a very gentle uh, uh, examination. Okay.
<coughs> complexity. We have three complexities, one, two, three. By the way, complexity guidelines, it is a guidelines. It doesn't supposed to be exactly like the guidelines because each case clinically will be assessed, diagnosed, assessed, and the treatment. Maybe it's code four, you can treat it at general dental practice if the patient after three months show response. So it is a guidelines. But for exam purposes, no, I will tell you, stick to this uh, papers. So it's a clear mention one, two, three. Uh, uh, complexity one, if there is a score one, two, three in any extent, this, this is easy. Here, complexity two, any BP score of any extent, okay, so it is score two. So once we'll get score four or, or, or astronaut or star, the complexity will move to complexity uh, two. Complexity three, okay. Uh, this is when we have a score four plus any other problem or contributing factor that might cause the, uh, the, the periodontal uh, periodontitis disease might go worse, okay? This is like diabetes, uh, any medications, general condition of the patients, uh, uh, with a, sp a special morphology, there is a crowding, there is enamel peers, need surgical interventions, people with radiotherapy, people with a special, a specific uh, need, all these will add, uh, uh, will make them an, an, a bit more uh, complex. Now, the presence of relevant modifying factor increase the complexity by one in a credit. This is important to know about it, okay? So for example, we have one, two, three, an anis extent, and the patient is diabetic or smoking, so it will be turned into complexity two. Patients who are immune compromised, patient, people with, with HIV, it will add an acrimin. Patient with uh, bleeding problems, People with the radiotherapy, bisphosphonate, all this will add an increment to your complexity. So now this is what about the complexity. General rule, general rule. Complexity one should be treated in general dental practice. Okay. Two, maybe. Okay. Try, then send. Three, almost go to a, a specialist. Now. Referral, I just wanted to mention just a quick a criteria for referral, maybe just one second. I want to make sure. No, I need. What phone is unmuted? Okay. Okay. Any criteria, people with part two is very important to know how to write a letter. Write it in any way you want, but you need just to add your information that they will be given to you in the exam. Uh, the consultant, you are referring information, but it is very important that you will have a score three or four. That's why we are referring because it's, it's falls with the criteria of the complexity two or three. Okay, medical conditions affected the periodontium. You need to uh, mention about any medical history in your referring letter. Acute problem, discomative gingivitis, necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis, maybe this condition is worse and not responding. So we need to refer aggressive form of predental disease, it is must. Let me go back to the, uh, what is the, okay, can I see the diagnosis of aggressive predentitis? It is must, just to quickly refer. These people, their bones are melting, melting very quickly. In three months, you will see that the tooth is starting mobile and it, they will have a hard time uh, reading. Okay, go back. Uh, patient requiring an intraoral minor grafting procedure and preparation for implant. This is why we refer the, the patient. They need uh, advanced stage of treatment. In your referral letter, you need to. Uh, 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 provide with x-ray and a given x-ray and any specialist he will reject all your referral if you didn't consent for the patient if you didn't tell the patient about what the specialist might do if you didn't 
ask the patient if he is happy to cope with, <clears throat> if you didn't give a proper one and oral hygiene, if the patient should stop smoking, his diabetes should be controlled, meticulous oral hygiene, it should be stable before referral, otherwise all your, uh, your referral will be uh, rejected. This is hopeless tooth, and this is definitely need extraction. This is where the uh, specialist might suggest uh, do uh, treatment, augmentation, bone augmentation. They will check the assess the bone defect, two-sided, three-sided. Okay, this is how they will assess if it is uh, uh, fit for regeneration or not. Okay, and again, referral for the forcation defects or if there is any other problem. Antibiotics. There is quite uh, a limited room for antibiotics in our uh, in periodontitis, especially in the colon periodontitis. The only way where we prescribe antibiotics in periodontitis is only for uh, acute necrotizing, ulcerative gingivitis, and for molar incisor periodontitis or aggressive periodontitis. Now, before, uh, it's very important to mention about necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis here. Uh, all of you, they call it, sometimes they call it mouth trench, they call it, interdental bubble will be gone, uh, metallic test, a bleeding sensitivity, the patient will have very uh, painful mouth, the patient can't drink, can't eat, bad odor, bad taste, everything. Uh, uh, some lymph adenopathy the patient will, will, will have. Uh, the reason behind that, uh, there is, uh, they, sometimes they said there is a chronic one and there is a temporary one. Chronic are related to people with HIV, severe malnutrition, and extreme living conditions. And the temporary one is related to stress, smoking, or poor oral hygiene. For the management, it is very important to uh, remove the cause, the cause of the factor, smoking, stress, oral hygiene. You need to correct all that. Uh, you need to give advice about uh, any of stress management, of smoking management, of poor oral hygiene. Uh, uh, metronidazole here is the first choice for the patient. And the antibiotic is most special when the patient have systemic involvement. Scaling deep cleaning maybe does not advise at, at the first day, but we wait for the patient to get uh, rid of the sensitivity, then you can start, or then you refer to the uh, specialist. Uh, give the patient any numbing uh, solution or numbing uh, mouth to help the patient to cope with the pain. Part one, part two, PLV. Uh, I believe I went through all uh, uh, these, uh, through this one. For part one, you need to read the PDFRs and the BSP website. It is very important. For you, it is very important. Okay because they can, uh, it is something new and they like it and it will be uh, a fresh. Perio, uh, uh, perio uh, subject is important because uh, you will see every day, you can't believe how many people they have periodontitis in real practice. And if you don't manage, if you don't diagnose, if you don't dedicate time for the patient, the patient will come back to you after 10 months, 10 years. He said, I lost uh, teeth because of you. You didn't diagnose my periodontitis. Come on and compensate me and give me a few millions. So be careful. Part two, uh, beside the knowledge, you, you should know. I will suggest you to know the layman term for all what we discussed, how to say it. Uh, please read Do Matter Perio PDF in the BSP. There is a leaf patient, patient leaflet. It's an amazing and really good. Just go and do it. PLV people who are starting work Congratulations and wish you the best of luck. It is a bit a bit difficult word. You need to get ready for it. Uh, any patient, any new patient, take full history, do BPP, uh, make sure you do a good uh, records record, recordings for your uh, findings. Okay, if you know any hairdressers, please tell me about that because this is the situation at the moment. We feel sorry for ourselves. Okay, now, any question? Text me any question, please. Let's take some questions.
Okay, sir, can we have access to the PDF and the PSP website if we are not? Yes, you can access to it. If you find any difficulty, please take it, but definitely it will be all and it's free. And any membership, it is it is simple and, and, and easy, you can pay, but you don't need to pay that for the access because it's free for the people. There is a beautiful videos as well. Uh, uh, I will, uh, I will ask, this recording of this uh, uh, webinar will be uh, on my YouTube channel. I will be really appreciated if you can subscribe and you can, it will be there for you so you can see it again. And I will post the links for important and nice videos as well. Okay. Which probe is used for, is it one or two? It is, it is, it is both are, cor are correct. Some, the old name is Python, they call it, and the WHO. But if they will ask you what is, uh, just say WHO. And uh, if there is anything else I want to add. Yes, and for uh, just one second. Okay. Okay, types of a provisor can we uh, read? It is in the handout as well. And uh, for, for your knowledge, it, for six point pocket charting, maybe I didn't mention it, we use UNC probe, UNC a probe, uh, right? Yes, UNC probe number 15. Uh, this this, uh, this a probe, there is a, a gauging of, of millimeters from one uh, to 15 and there is a black band on 4 to 5 and uh, 9 to 10 and 14 to uh, yes, that's what you want to present a question i mean should we refer any patient having lack of one second cover okay well, we need to do it uh, do we need to do it with up and down motion for a problem, it is walking around. It is just gently. Yes, we can say it is walking down, but very gently, very, very gently. Should we refer any patient to having lack upon us with the succumative gingivitis? No, you don't need. No. For lack of planus, man, uh, for lack of planus, it is depends for the patient. Uh, just one second, wait and groom. Okay. This committed gingivitis, it is uh, it's inflammation of the gum. So you give the patient uh, uh, what things can hide the symptoms in terms of pain, mouth, mouth runs, and uh, to ease until it, the patient will go through the remission uh, period. For the lichenoid, uh, like in the planus, if in the exam, Anything before 14 days, anything before 21 days, I will say, explain everything, and I will tell the patient, if it's still there, then we need to refer you for biopsy. Because in real life, lacking the planus, when you refer to the maxus or oral medicine, they don't biopsy all the lacking planus. If it is typical, unilat uh, bilateral, lacy, and there is nothing, they don't biopsy, but they will keep monitoring. If it is sus suspicion on the appearance, then they will biopsy. This is the unstable or recurrent. How to distinguish? They will give you the information, but again, for this one, I will recall this slide. Everything in the guidelines here. One second. Okay. Can you see here? Shahida. Okay. Bleeding on a probing, more than when you do six point pocket charting, and you will see that the bleeding on a probing is less than 10%, and the period, uh, pocket periodontal depth is less than four millim, then it is stable. But if you see that there is a bleeding on a probing, more than 10% of your dentition in six point pocket charting, then it is an remission. If there is a periodontal pocket more than five, Millim or uh, bleeding or probing or more than four millim, then it is uh, currently unstable. Okay. 
I mean to present that to the black that okay I will I will put it in, in the group yeah I will put it yeah thank you sir uh, UNC proper that's me regarding recession will be given or we should calculate it from the x-ray no it should be given for you it is difficult to calculate it because recession it is a clinical you need to see it clinically Doctor, when it's stable and when it is not, again, Zainab, it is in the, uh, you need to follow this Zainab. This, can you see this one here? Okay, and these findings will be given to you. These findings will be given to you definitely in the scenario. Okay, again, it is found in this part of the general guidelines here. It is here, can you see it here? Again, here. This funds will be definitely given to you. Okay. Okay, one second for one. Where can? Okay, one second, private. I need to just one second. Okay, sorry for that, just one other second. I don't want to miss any question. Uh, YouTube channels or the things that are boneless. Uh, for boneless, we are going to measure this on X ray or will be given the. No, it, it, it will be your judgment on the X ray. This is the trick. It will be your, your, your judgment. Okay. So for all this, but do we follow complexity code or BPE? And fine, it's fine, doctor. BPE will give you idea. Complexity is, is about referral, it is different. Okay. It is different because it will help you both of them because if the BPA again will give you the code but there is another findings then it will add for example add risk or add an increment you need to think about both of them you know, see number two regarding the session will be given as I said thank you doctor what can we read about Rumford teeth it is uh, do matter per your file and BSP website I will post it. I will post it. I will write everything. I will send everything. Thank you, Dr. Mahman. Dr. Wen, I think it's terrible. So in case of tooth where episectomy is already done, we do we assess bond level loss of the tooth on the base of the current or root length or on the previous? The, uh, you, you assess it according to the given x-ray. What x-ray will be given to you, then you will assess and measure the amount of the bond. Uh, for all is going to measure this in x ray. Okay. 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 Can you please arrange similar webinar and statistics relevant? Oh, uh, Shaitan, it is difficult to arrange such subjects. It's really annoying. But I'm, I'm planning to do next week uh, medical emergency. I will cover every single point in medical emergency. Every single point will be covered. Now, uh, I really appreciate. I'm really sorry. Maybe I took a bit long time. Uh, I will share the recording in the, in the, in the channel. I will send you the link. Uh, and uh, please join us. I will add a bit re really, really good uh, videos in the channel planning. So I'll try to use uh, my time effectively for you. I, there is quite a few points. I wish that I was able to deliver it to you in, in the correct way. But I can't talk to the new. Uh, or teach you the new classification. You need to know by heart, then you understand what I uh, I meant. Okay. Uh, and that's it. Da, 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 da. Yes, that's it. That's it. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, take care of yourself. Stay safe and we'll see you soon. I will send you the invitation link for the medical emergency and uh, on, the, on the website or on the group. Take care of all, you, all of you. Thank you very much. Bye.